welcome to Ask by Bottle Flip. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Rashid Al Habtour, the CEO and a founder of Al Habtour Trading Enterprises and the founder of RKHBC. And let's not forget the TikTok sensation. Thank you, Mr. Rashid. Thank you, Emma, for coming. Good to see you after a long time. Good to see you. And on the right, we have Ghazil Yemen, the founder of Bottle Flip Agency and the guy behind Vitamin G. Thank you, Ghazi, for coming. Thank and you. to my left, our Kimo Crypto, the guy crazy in crypto and the founder of Gulf Crypto. Welcome, Kimo. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi, Arman. Hi. So, for the first question, who is Mr. Rashid Al Habtour? Rashid Al Habtour is a businessman, and uh, of course, I come from a business family. Of course, my father is Khalaf Al Habtour, the founder of Al Habtour Group, and a self made man. He came uh, the beginning of the creation of Dubai. Of course, uh, we were lucky that uh, when we were children, my father had sent us to summer schools. And then, of course, I went to George Washington University and I started working for my father. And then I went uh, independent on my own. So uh, it's been a long uh, journey. So we are still learning. And uh, in business, you never stop learning. That is the, it doesn't matter how old are you. You will never stop learning in business. Of course. That's and right. what are some of the things that you learned? Today we live in a world that business changes. Uh, before COVID and after COVID, the whole concept of business have changed. And uh, Sometimes, uh, even it doesn't matter what business you do, even if you make a hundred study, it doesn't work. And sometimes you start a business without a study and it works. You learn, of course, in uh, business, you have to do your homework right. You have to be disciplined. You have to focus. You have to control the money. You have to see the competition. You see what's going on. and. Uh, things, uh, I have to say, the things in business that have changed in the last two, three years, equivalent what happened in the last 30 to 40 years. That fast as things are uh, changing. So we live a different world between COVID and oil prices and uh, short food supply with, with the war in Russia and Ukraine. So everything, uh, there is some people are making money and some people are losing money. It depends on the situation. So for today, we are living a different uh, world, a very fast world and very unpredictable in business. So given all of your accomplishment that you achieved in your business career and in your polo career, uh, what would you like to change? And what would you like to keep and uh, why? It is too late to say uh, to change, okay? Because we don't have a time machine to go back but what I have to say in a different way, that what you have learned from your mistakes. One of the big mistakes I made uh, after I graduated from college, I finished in 91. That is the same time of the collapse of the Soviet Union. When the collapse of the Soviet Union happened, there was a creation of Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Mal Moldova, the Baltic States, Belarus, and all the other Bajan, Armenia, so about 14, 15 countries. So you have a 15 market. I, I went and tried to open showrooms all in that time to sell cars because to bring them new cars, Western cars, Japanese cars compared to Russian cars. Uh, Lada and Volga and whatever common cars they have. But the mistake that I made, I went to sell them expensive cars for people that don't have income. So that is the mistake. So I went to sell a 30, a 40, 50, a $50,000 car to a person who's 90% of the country or 95% of the country, their income was $100. So I should have waited 10 more years to go back there at the boom of the oil in uh, Azerbaijan or Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan and the wealth of Russia and all those things. So this is some of the things uh, that you have to sometimes 
you have to go to you are you are going to a market too early and sometimes you are going too late and this is also sometimes luck plays a part in business i totally agree luck plays a big role in business so right now if you weren't mr rashid al habtour who will you choose to be and why I will not choose to be anybody except Rashid Al Habtour. No one, no one at all. No, no one at all. If you couldn't pick Mr. Rashid, uh, no, I, uh, I like the way I'm handling it, and uh, maybe uh, we'll do something else in the future. I will be uh, a different Rashid Al Habtour. Yeah. Who impacted uh, Rashid Al Habtour, and who, who do you consider your mentor throughout your life? Of course, uh, first thing is my father in business. And when I was very young, I was raised with my uh, grandfather, who was also my mentor, because my father was very young and he was working very hard to build his empire. But of course, until today, we are learning uh, from my father because it's a different school. And uh, uh, you see, there is different schools in uh, UAE or Dubai. There is the people from the 60s, there is the people from the 70s, there is the people from the 80s, there is the people from the 90s. Like me, I'm from the 90s. And today, you have the year the, from the, the year 2000 or the, after 2010 with the application and the startup, you have a new generation. You have comp- people that became billionaires, uh, such as people from Kareem or uh, the guy from uh, Amazon, the guy, what's the name of the company? So dot com. com and these companies. So it's a different school. So today uh, you have people running applications worth uh, a real estate company of a ten billion dollar. So like I said, it's a different school. So everybody has his own way of greatness. Everybody has the old school, the middle school, the new school. There is different schools. So everybody is different. So, in your opinion, what are the top skills you should uh, get to become part of new school or old school? Or, or, or the... You have to learn. You have to learn. Today, there is people, for example, doing real estate. Real estate is old school from 100 years ago, people doing it, and will be for the next 100 years. You cannot avoid real estate. Real estate is an asset. It will always uh, be there. And the young people are investing in real estate and the old people are investing in the real estate. Housewife uh, or a woman, if her husband divorces her or uh, her husband dies, first thing she wants to make sure she has a house. It's a real estate. So real estate is important. Last week, one guy came to me he said he's going to sell his property to invest in the stock market. I said to him, uh, something wrong with you? You never sell real estate. You have extra cash? Yes, invest it. But you never sell real estate. So there is, a, there is things, uh, the old school, if you tell them about crypto, they will not understand it. I use crypto. I get paid in crypto. And I receive my money in uh, cash and crypto. Transfer or cash, whatever. But I still don't understand it. Hmm. But there is people, that's all they do. And I have to say, I'm going to focus in the future on crypto because I think it's going to be the future. What uh, fundamental aspects do you see in crypto in comparison with uh, traditional assets? Okay, traditional assets, you cannot move it. But crypto, you can move it. Today, uh, people with issues, and especially like people uh, in Russia and Ukraine, if they move to any other country, they have crypto, they can uh, survive. Mm-hmm. But if the guy has a hotel in Moscow or Kiev or a property with rental, he cannot take it on air float and fly with it everywhere. <laughs> you know. But with crypto, it's on his phone, he can uh, cash it anywhere around the world. Yeah. It can be in Japan, London, because uh, crypto is an untraceable thing. And uh, honestly, it's a fantastic, it's an asset. And uh, I tell you what, it's going to be the future. I have an interesting question. Um, if you were writing a title uh, of a book, what would the title be? And the book is about your life. Uh, I say, uh, okay, that's, 
That's uh, uh, not an easy question to answer because I can give you 100 names. And what's I can favorite? have you be an encyclopedia. <laughs> I can say to you, uh, predict the unpredictable. That will be the title yes. of the book. Predict the unpredictable. And why? Why do? You, why? Why is that? Because you're always in life there are surprises. You plan things, you end up with other things, and sometimes you uh, get opportunities that you did not plan for. Mm. So everything has to do uh, with uh, in business. There is planning, discipline, and also luck, and to be at the right place at the right time. It's important. Mm. If you were born with a family with fortune, luck, and fortune uh, that you are in a country that of course support you, you have the opportunity to grow. But if you are in a country that does not give you the opportunity, it doesn't matter even if you are the most intelligent physicist, doctor, your only option is to immigrate to other countries that can appreciate, appreciate you and, and uh, uh, support your talent. Follow up on Ghazi's question, if you go back in time to your teenager self, what will you tell him to do and what not to do? Today, we have one big problem with the new generation. The old generation, generation that grew up in the 60s and 70s, 80s, they were very good in controlling their spendings. So they spend, let's say, 20-30% of their income and they save. The 1990s, they will uh, spend uh, 80% and maybe they save 20%. Today's generation, they will uh, spend 150% from what they make. <laughs> My advice to new generation, please learn to save money. It's very important. Tab, uh, can you tell us more about like your uh, hobbies and polo and, and what do you like most about it? The most important thing in polo, that the connection and the network I have. Today, through my polo career in the last 30 years, I have friends from all over the world. You're talking from head of states to royalties, to business people, to friends, to professional polo players. So that is the great thing about polo. Winston Churchill said about polo, he said about polo, it is your passport to the world. And through polo, you meet people. And I know, in fact, People learn uh, polo and they don't know even how to play polo just to meet other hmm. people. Just to connect. So polo will be uh, great. What are the skills that helped you to reach where you are right now? That really helped you? The skills, uh, I have to say I am good with people. My skill is uh, communication and networking. Connecting with people yes. is so important. Uh, I have, uh, I am who I am. I uh, don't pretend to be somebody else. Uh, if I know something, I will tell you yes. If I don't know it, I will say no. Maybe I try to uh, do something or take a risk. But I have friends that I met in college 35 years ago. We are still friends till today after 35. I have partners who work with me from the last 30 years and we are still together. So the most important thing is the, is the dignity, respect your uh, name and your family. And okay, people make mistakes. You, nobody doesn't make a mistake. But if I have a friend, he will be my friend forever. forever. Yeah, that is the good thing. So I have friends with me and partners for so many years. What is the key in uh, maintaining business uh, partnerships and also avoiding uh, conflicts between business partners? Be very careful which partner you choose. Very important. First thing, chemistry has to start from friendship. Do not partner with people that unpredictable. Okay, don't say I will have this document and I have this paper and I will have this contract. Uh, there is different kind of partnerships. There is partnership with your family because you have no choice. You're there for your family. And of course, 
your family, you have to trust each other. And in family also, a lot of conflicts. You can see from around the world and some of the biggest families, they're suing each other left and right. You have a partner that you, uh, you trust, you have a good chemistry, you, some partners you could trust them blindly. And then you might meet somebody and you become a partner with them uh, that you have. Listen, once there is no trust with your partner, it will never happen. It will continue, it doesn't matter. Conflict uh, will happen. So there is, when I partner with somebody, I f always find a different formula. Uh, if somebody, let's say, you partner with somebody in a restaurant, you partner with him on profit and loss. Maybe he will bring you a chef for 50,000 dirham and you tell him, no, I have a chef for 20,000 dirham. Then you have a conflict there. So there is, you can partner on a profit and loss. You can partner on a fixed fee. You can partner on a turnover fee. It depends. So always try to find the best formula to partner. What are you giving? What is he giving? He's investing money. You're giving strategic partnership. So when I do partnership, I have to find the best strategy not to have a conflict with my partner. Um, I think we're about down to the last two questions. Uh, number one is, what's your outlook on the future? And the last question would be, what is your final advice for the upcoming young entrepreneurs that are... Like I said in the beginning, today we live a very fast, uh, fast times from everything, from laws. I mean, everything is happening around us. Look at the Corona thing have changed the world. Uh, airline industry have changed. Uh, uh, business method have changed. Banking have changed. I think banks in the future will be, will keep shrinking and uh, there will be no more uh, you're hiding your money in uh, Switzerland or doing this or doing that and doing that. No, there will be crypto, banking online. People will be creating a new financial uh, way to do business. There will be uh, no more that we have to stick to this currency or that currency or that, you know. There is, I have a feeling there is we're going to be seeing a lot of surprises in the next uh, two years. And uh, of course, I uh, like to encourage young people, if they want to start something, start small, start on your own. The biggest billionaires today in the world, from uh, Steve Jobs, uh, Microsoft, Apple, they started from garages. Okay, don't uh, tell me uh, because your father has money and he give you 10 million dirham, you go and have a, a fancy office and uh, spend uh, uh, 6 million, 7 million dirham on a fancy office and then you don't know how to run an operation. No, in doing business, it has nothing to do with your decoration. It has nothing to do with uh, your address. Some of the world's biggest companies started in remote areas outside San Francisco in uh, what do you call it, the Valley, uh, Silicon Valley, that nobody even knew about it. Mm. It was one of the cheapest real estate in America, and look at it now, the most expensive real estate. So it is these people that started from garages, they must have a goal and they had an objective. And look at them now. Look at Elon Musk, look at uh, Bill Gates. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, all of them started very small and look at them today. So your, cut, your overhead, your cost, and in my opinion, don't get as a young person in businesses where there is high overhead and high stock. Mm. So don't tell me, do service. Services, human services, is you are a working business. You are a working money machine if you want to be. Don't go and uh, say, I'm gonna do, uh, I don't know, supermarket and I go invest uh, in uh, food. For example, many years ago, I did uh, organic business. I started uh, very good. 
and uh, I started importing from all over the world. I didn't know the expiration that Dubai has a six month expiration and uh, this law, that law, that law. And then I discovered there is 10,000 suppliers in Dubai that you can buy from them into your retail shop. Mm. So you have to do your homework right. To me, one of the most dangerous things in business is having high stock because stock expire, stock get uh, uh, custom, stock uh, gets uh, six months. If you don't sell it, you have to pay taxes on it. Yeah, so stock is the most uh, difficult thing. Uh, avoid that as a young person. Use yourself as, for example, if you want to start a concierge service. Uh, I don't know, you're a tour guide uh, in Egypt or in, uh, anywhere here in Dubai. So always use yourself in the big. Once you have money, then you can uh, diversify. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rashid. It was a pleasure having you on the uh, talk show. And uh, thank you for your time. Before, before we finish, I got my license. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> my God. <Finally>. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Uh, after how many uh, trials? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like, and stay tuned for our next guest. Oh,